Alright, what's going on everyone? My name is Cameron. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a, another towery tutorial. Um, this is going to be a bit of a quick one, um, just because uh, this is going to be kind of a building block episode where we look at, um, what we're going to be looking at today is how to invoke some code in our towery application from the, uh, from the client side uh, front end code that we that we uh, are writing. So that that being said, uh, this thus far we we kind of looked at how to uh, how to interact with the uh, the package that Towery provides um, for interacting with certain common APIs like dialog boxes, um, as well as well as uh, like the file system module that they provide for reading from the uh, from reading from a file from your local file system, right? But um, but we but there are certain cases where you might actually have to write write your own function uh, in Rust, right? And then have uh, have your client side code actually invoke that rather than simply interact interacting with these um, these common tools that they've kind of wrapped into a package for you. And so, with that being said. We'll take a look at how to do that today. So, as you can see, uh, so far I have just I, I've kind of cleaned up our uh, our app dot view here. Um, if you haven't if you haven't watched any of the previous tutorials of, of getting started with Towery or uh, using the using the uh, the packet in the package that Towery provides. Uh, if you have, if you haven't watched either of those, I recommend that you go and go and watch those because that'll be kind of a good setup step um, for moving forward with this. Um, but that being said, uh, I basically have a uh, a V a V bootstrapped view application, um, and I. I'm, but this can work with any this, this can work with any uh, any front end framework. Uh, just to preface, um, I do want to emphasize that if you haven't interacted with Rust at all, uh, definitely go and brush up on that before continuing. Just because you're going to uh, you're going to need a little bit of the a little bit of those skills in uh, when when looking at looking at uh, at going from here on out. So. All right, enough enough of that. Uh, we have a template that has just a simple button here that we are going to use to uh, actually send a request to to our application, and then that that uh, that bit of code that we invoke will then send something back. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to create a function here that's going to say uh, ping. It's going to be a a function. And then I want to bind this to an at click event. And then I want to simply one, make this async. So we're going to say, a, that way we can say await. And then I want to import invoke from at Towery apps slash API slash slash Towery. And so this will be the method that you call in order to in order to uh, invoke some Towery code. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say try catch error console error error. And then we're going to say await invoke and we're gonna have to stop right here because as you can see, uh, this is expecting a command and then uh, some arguments that we'll get to in just a bit. But we don't know what command we need right now. So we're going to need to go ahead and go write that. So let's go ahead and we're going to go to our, we're going to go to our source towery, source main.rs. And in here, we are going to define a function called pong. And all 
this is going to do is it's going to return a string pong. Now that's all well and good, but we want first to say that we are returning a string. And then we're going to need to use a macro here from that's provided by Towery. Uh, if you're not familiar with, uh, again, if you're not familiar with any of these concepts, definitely go brush up on your Rust, um, just because uh, macros are kind of a core, a core concept in Rust, and so uh, the explaining that doesn't really fit into the context of this video. Um, I'll, I'll try to leave some resources to Rust in the uh, in the description below. That way, uh, if you are if you are trying to learn these things, then you'll have a, a resource to uh, to start with. Um, so Towery, you're going to want to use Towery command, and this uh, wrong type, str. Okay. So essentially, what we're saying is, is I want to define something that is invocable uh, with this Towery command, uh, and I want that to be this function. And this this function is going to, when it's called, it's just going to return this string here, or this uh, this string reference here, uh, Pong. So now if I come back, uh, I should be able to, here in the command, I should just be able to say Pong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say response equals, and then console.log response. All right. And so I already have this running, I'm going to kill everything here and then let's go ahead and get that started again and fire up my uh, fire up the app and it wants it to be static because it's not really returning anything so let's do let's come back to our main rs and change this really quick uh, will it just auto fix for me can i just get it to do that there okay all right so now let's go ahead and start this up again. And you'll see that we have this function is never used. We'll look at that in just a bit. Uh, I'm gonna open up DevTools since we are going to be console logging and I am going to click ping and nothing is happening. Uh, if, I come if I come to my ping and I console.log, and I click ping, we can see that the click event is happening, but we're not getting anything. So with that said, why is that? That is because in our main RS, we need to actually add invoke handler. And in invoke handler, we need to say towery generate handler and then pass in the function that we or the yeah the function that we have written so this this basically says hey go ahead and expose pong so now if i come back to our application as soon as it uh, reloads here i can click ping and voila we get pong in return so what's happening is we are sending, we're invoking with our with our Towery client library here, we're invoking the Pong function that we have written. So that's really cool. But what happens if say I want to um, I want to call call this function with some sort of uh, some sort of arguments um, Maybe I, in the case that we're going to look at, we're going to send a number, we're going to multiply it, and we're going to return it. Um, really trivial, but um, this could be the different. This could be changed, right? Um, to say something like a login, where I just like uh, an API call, right? I send a log, I I make an API request to log in, and I pass in a or I pass a username and password to that request. Um, I'm going to need it inevitably to be able to pass data to and from uh, these commands. 
And so for our for our to, for our sake here, uh, we're going to change this to multiply, and I'm just going to make that u8. Um, obviously, this is going to be an error here. Uh, we're going to say num and make this of u8. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to say, I'm actually going to call this double for the sake of uh, what we're doing. And I'm going to say uh, num times two. And we'll, this isn't static anymore, so we'll need to do that. Okay, so now what we're saying is I want to be able to pass in a num, and then whenever I pass that in, uh, I want to multiply it by two and return it. So how do I do this? Well, first of all, we need to change the command, right? We need to change this to double. I'm going to obviously say double, and I'm going to actually make this a little bit more fun here. We're gonna say text. We're going to say uh, const num equals ref. So I'm just making this kind of dynamic. Uh, uh, number, and then let's go ahead and v dash model. You don't need to really know what any of this is for what we're doing right now. Um, I'm going to change this to double. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of break down what's actually happening uh, afterwards. But effectively, what I'm doing is is I'm saying um, I'm saying I want to have an input. You'll see if I open up our application, I have this input here, and I can change the number uh, the. I can change this number, and the reason I'm doing that is just so that like I have control over what this number is that we're sending, um, without without having to manually change it in the code. I can make multiple requests. So what what I want to do now is I want to in order I want to pass some arguments here. So you'll notice invoke args is something that we can pass to this invoke uh, this invoke function. I want to pass in num. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it num.value, so the value of this uh, this num ref. And so now, whenever I, I'm gonna open up DevTools here, whenever I change this to, we'll say one, I'll send it, and you'll notice it responds back with two. If I change this to like six and send, it, res it responds with 12. So whenever we do this, we are sending that num value, and whenever whenever we send that, we're sending this num value, which this double is ex this double function is expecting, and it is returning twice that uh, twice that value. So now, if I try to send something like num one, or actually let's just say test, we'll do test. If I send test and I call it, I get an I get an error. It says invalid args num for command double command double missing required key num. So it it, it is very descriptive. Uh, it is very descriptive in telling me, hey, I was expecting to have num whenever you called the the double function. Can you please send me that value rather than what you uh, what you're sending me now? So, that being said, uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much how it works. Um, in the next video, we're going to be looking at how uh, in, into some real use cases for um, what you would use this for uh, specifically um, as it relates to saving files. Um, so we've looked at reading files in from the, file, the local file system. We're actually going to be looking at uh, taking some data in and writing that to your local file system uh, and how all this ties together. So uh, if there's any sort of feedback that you have, please drop that in the description or in the, uh, in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this beneficial. Uh, if you hit the dislike, please 
leave that feedback as I'm always trying to learn uh, new ways to make these videos better uh, and keep them coming. I thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.